the glory land way.
to you.
to worship Thee as the deep panteth for the water so my soul longeth after Thee all worshiping tonight Just lift our hearts and our voices and our hands toward heaven tonight and just bless him. Just bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Lord, we bless your mighty la la casa da bohola ketara la ka. Hallelujah, we give you glory. We give you glory tonight, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. We give you praise tonight. Lord, we magnify your lovely name, Lord. We magnify, Lord, your lovely name, Lord. We magnify, Lord, that beautiful name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated tonight. Praise God, what a wonderful presence. This is when you know that the waters are troubled. This is when you can believe for miracles. This is where you can expect miracles to happen. This is where you can expect healing. Praise God. Just stay in an attitude of praise as we take up prayer requests right now, my Lord. This is, <laughs> this is where God loves to move, amen. So if anybody's got a prayer request right now, let's just believe by faith. We're going to believe for it. Let's pray for Sister Kathy Elliott. She's back in Linwood tonight. Let's pray for her. And so I ask your prayers today for, for Ricky. I went and saw him, and he professed to know Jesus. So praise God. He needed it. God is good. So let's keep praying for him tonight. And uh, keep praying for Mother. She'll be getting out this week. So pray for her tonight. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Sister Donna. All right. Let's pray for this one tonight. Amen. God's a healer. Brother Larry. Pray for this brother-in-law tonight. Amen. 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 Pray for Kevin's uncle tonight. Faith and healing. Amen. Well, I read a story in Ezekiel. It said these bones can live. Woo! 
I don't care how bad they're broken, mangled. We serve a God who's able to put those bones back together tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody else tonight. We're going to believe for miracles tonight. Amen. Amen. Remember these tonight. Amen. 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 Yes, pray for all these tonight. Pray, okay, pray for kids. Pray for youth tonight. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Touch Rhonda, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Keep praying for our nation. Keep praying for our churches. Keep praying for this whole world tonight. Jesus, they need Jesus. Amen. Amen. How about uh, how about stress, emotional fatigue, all these things? The, the the battles, the battles of the mind tonight. The spiritual battles that we're facing and dealing with. And you know, there. If we could see what was going on up here, it'd be unreal. The spiritual battles between the good and evil that is just fighting over souls, fighting over souls tonight. So let's just pray for people that we will stand strong and stay, stay, uh, stay focused and stay forward tonight. You, you know, uh, so many, so many uh, attacks against people's minds tonight, and so that you know, when you're attacked spiritually, you're attacked emotionally. It attacks you, affects you physically. So let's pray for all this tonight. Anybody else? Don't want to miss nobody. We're just going to believe for miracles tonight. If we could just stand to our feet, if you can, if you can, if you can't, just 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 believe and we're going to, my Lord, whoo, glory to God. Activate your faith. <clears throat> Release your faith right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, shalala kasarondo bohorende la keshanda Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we're going to bless that name tonight. Lord, we're going to praise that wonderful, holy, mighty name, Lord, that you're able. Lord, as you just touch my brothers, Lord, touch my sisters tonight. Lord, touch the one of these motorcycle accidents. Lord, we pray restore tonight, Lord. Lord, touch Kathy and mother tonight, Lord. And Lord, and just touch the daughter's request tonight, Lord. And Kevin's uncle Ronnie tonight. Lord, just pray for Judy tonight, Lord. Melinda. 
Lord, we pray for these tonight. We pray for our shut-ins. Lord, we pray, Lord, for our elders tonight. Touch Sister Rhonda. Lord, that you will strengthen and bless in healing tonight. Uh, Lord, Sister Claire and George, we plead the blood over these. Uh, Lord, that you will minister in a mighty way. Lord, touch families. Touch families tonight, Lord, that are Lord that are hurting, Lord. Touch these tonight, Lord, that are Lord that are unsettled, that are restless in their souls, uh, Lord, that are restless tonight, Lord, in their relationship with you, Lord, that they will be brought in, or they will be awakened spiritually, uh, Lord, to the knowledge of the saving grace in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray for our young people. We pray for our children. Lord, we pray for our families tonight, God. Lord, we pray for our, Lord, our people tonight for faithfulness, Lord, and a hunger, Lord, and a, Lord, a desire to serve and a desire, Lord, to be in your house around godly people, Lord. Help us in the workplace, Lord. Touch our nation, Lord, from the leadership, Lord, to the powers that be. Uh, Lord, we pray tonight for a mighty moving of the Holy Spirit, uh, Lord, in our churches tonight, God, in our pastors, Lord, in our, Lord, in the nursing homes, in our ministries, in the hospitals tonight, Lord. Father, we pray, bless our missionaries. We, we stand with them tonight, God, that you would open doors tonight, God, and Lord, give them access tonight, Lord, to new territory and to, Lord, and to new families, Lord. Lord, as they build relationships, Lord, Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem tonight. Lord, that you would bless your people, Lord. Bless your children, Lord. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you're so mindful. Lord, that you're so watchful, Lord. Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Let's just lift our hands right now. <clears throat> oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like a friend. toward that name tonight. Declare your liberty. Declare woo, declare your victory. Declare your, my Lord, declare your ikarabasatos. Declare your victory. Declare your breakthrough tonight. Father, we look upward. Lord, we look heavenward tonight. Lord, Lord, when things are collapsing, Lord, round about us tonight, God, we're still looking up. Lord, we're still looking up tonight, Lord. We're looking to you, Lord. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you tonight, Lord. Lord, that you're on the throne, Lord. You're on the throne tonight, God. You're still the sovereign God tonight, Lord, who is able. Who is able tonight, Lord? Who is able tonight, God? Praise the mighty name. Praise the mighty name. Oh, think about it tonight. Thank you, Lord. something that I about that name. 
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a good hang up of praise tonight. There's something, church. There's something about that name tonight. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody shout. Somebody shout tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise God. You may be seated again, my Lord. Lord. Folks, if you can't feel this tonight, your spoon and fill out of your bowl. Right. There is a wonderful, sweet, sweet oh. spirit of presence here in this place tonight. God is moving on lives. He's touching situations. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go ahead and take up our Sunday night tithes and offering. We could have our ushers come on down tonight. Thank you for giving and sowing into the kingdom of God. Bless it for me, sir. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, he called my sota la la ka. He rama mara mo korda la la ka. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Bless you, brother. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Amen, amen. God is good tonight. Amen. Come on, Brother Kevin, tonight. Come on down tonight. Praise the Lord. I asked Brother Kevin he'd fill in tonight. I appreciate Brother Kevin and Tracy tonight. Amen. Give them a big hand. We do appreciate right. their efforts and labors tonight. I'll get it for you, friend. I got it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's all about the name Jesus, right? What did Jesus say in John? He said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you, Pastor. Love you, brother. Well, i got to praise the Lord, first of all, before I get into this message. Three years ago, I started a journey. Most of you guys have been here when I started it. And it was going to the Oklahoma School of Ministry. Well, praise God, after three years, I've completed all my courses for their start, their certi certified license on Norday. So I've completed all three courses. I am a licensed minister through the Assembly of God. I have to wait two years from November to be ordained, but I have everything under, under the books. No more tests. It's a waiting period, and that's a praise the Lord. And, you know... I'm not saying this to brag at all because, guys, I just want to tell you and, and Sister Jerry, you can do anything. God will provide all your needs. You know, he was it say he doesn't qualify or he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. And when we realize that we're called of God, that's the first thing you need to understand. Because that's one thing getting through my big skull was that I was even quali or called by this God. But I can tell you that he can do things in your life and change your life. He can change your family. He can heal your body. He can make a way where there is no way. Praise God. So anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know, uh, you know, that I am, for me to do the schooling like that, it took the Lord. Because I have to, unlike Tracy, she can pick up a book in a week, take the test, and do great. I have to study every day. It doesn't come natural to me. I have to study and study and study. And even then, one course comes in, the other one, that one goes out, another one comes in type things. So that's why, you know, to me to even be up here right now, I just thank the Lord. I thank you guys for allowing me to be up here. I thank the pastor for sticking behind me and helping me and all through this way. And, and Sister Tracy is on the same path. She's got one more test to be certified, well, through school, and then she's got her uh, credentials test. So be in prayer with that. But, but guys, don't think you're too old. Uh, and I speak to Jerry, Allison, Colton, uh, Eric, all you young, Victor, guys, start while you're young. Don't wait till you're 50 years old to do this. So, I mean, God will make a way, but it's so much easier when you got the energy to do it. 
and the mind to do it. And it's on your, your you know, your, you come out of school, you're still in that mode. And that's why I did not quit. A lot of people, you got to wait two years. And a lot of the people that I was in school with last year, they stopped. They said, well, I'll go, you know, before next year. I'll skip a year. Well, if I did that, I was just trying to get motivated again to do that. I didn't want to do that. So, so anyway, as I move on, my, uh, my message, one thing, when the pastor asked me to do this, I was praying, and he laid on my heart John 14. And I was like, Lord, I don't understand, but okay. So part of my message is going to be in John 14, but the other one was I preached a message the first time in four years in the nursing home. Normally we just do a Bible study and we read the Bible and I talk about it. A lot of them think I may be preaching, but I'm not preaching. I'm just talking about the, uh, the Scripture and such as we read it. But I literally gave a message Thursday night because I was challenged by a 50-year a, uh, a 50 year, 50 year pastor that is in there now, a Church of God pastor, and he asked me a month ago, to do a sermon over the fear of death. And I was like, okay, well, I really, really respect this man. So I went home and I prayed about it, and the Lord provided it. It took a couple of weeks, and, and I got scripture here and there. And I was just praying for the right time to do it. And I gave that message Wednesday night. It went over very well. And uh, so... So I, I prayed, I was like, Lord, do I do that again? But you told me John 14. So the way God works is we worked all this in here. So we're going to get started here, and we're going to start with Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that is in John 14, 1 through 7. So we are going to read that. John 14, 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go, go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, he'll what? He'll come again and receive you unto himself. Uh, that where I am, there you may be also. Guys, this fear of death as I start talking about, I want you to understand there is no reason to fear death. The fear that we have, sometimes it comes from the pain. We fear pain. We don't like pain. I don't like pain. You know, that's one of the biggest fear. But I'm telling you what, when we leave this earth, there is no more suffering. There's not going to be no pain. It's going to be glorious. Praise God. So anyway, Jesus says that he's going to come back too. So I'm praying that we go into rapture. He could come at any moment, any time. And that's going to be part of my sermon too. But but I want you to understand that it's all about Jesus, that he is the way. So in verse 4 it says, And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. But here's the thing too, and this is where I think God was leading me about the church in John 14. Because here's where Thomas says, and you know, doubt Thomas, everybody, all of his disciples, I think Jesus wanted to knock them upside the head sometimes. Because they were so hard-headed and they did not get it. Sometimes if you don't read and study the Word truly and get deep into these, we think that the disciples, they were preachers. They, they went out, they did things. They, no, they were as ignorant as I am. Probably, I mean, it's like they doubted, they challenged Jesus. And Jesus, they didn't understand what Jesus was saying. And we're in the church. A lot of us have been sitting in church for a few for years and years and years. And sometimes we still don't get it. But Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? But what Jesus say in verse 6? He said, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye had known my Father and from henceforth ye known him and have seen him. But guys, as you go down here, and I'm not going to read all of that, because if you would, take time tonight or in the morning and, and read chapter 14 and understand what Jesus was saying, because Philip even questioned him. Uh, when he was telling him all this stuff, and Philip, well, I'll just read verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And that, that will be enough for us. 
And Jesus told him, you're not getting this, guys. You're just not understanding that I am the one you're looking for. And, but see, they, they know what they were religious, or well, a lot of them more religious, but they were taught by the Jews and they knew Jewish ways. So they were looking for this Messiah and they, they knew in their heart that Jesus was a Messiah, but yet he was still, he wasn't this big glorious king that they wanted. How many times do we want something? We, we want to expect more. And we get let down, we think. But sometimes when Jesus comes through, there is never a letdown. Because when it's his way, it's the right way and the only way. But anyway, I'm going to move on. But I had to bring that up and let you know that even though we doubt things, even though you may not understand death, nobody... nobody has returned from the grave except for Jesus Christ. So the only words we have to stand on are the words in this Bible that he told us. And he came back again and he gave the disciples some more stuff to write down. So anyway, Jesus said in John eleven twenty three, 23, and this is where Lazarus dies. And I want to talk about Lazarus just for a little bit because that he... Uh, it's a story we need to understand that what we think of and what we've been taught is right. Jesus rose Lazarus from the grave. But as we read and we understand the life of Lazarus, Jesus was doing more than just raising him from out of the grave. He was trying to give us, yell assembly of God, people of 2022, an understanding about life and death. Okay, because Jesus was life. He had the ability to raise anybody from the dead. And do we have that ability? We do. Okay, we do. You know, but there's always that but in there. You know, if you pray for somebody and they raise from the dead, it's going to be a tremendous thing. It's going to go worldwide and it's going to be crazy. Does it happen? It does happen. I think it happens overseas a lot. But the thing is, we don't want to focus completely on that because one thing, when if somebody, if I was to raise somebody from the dead, they would focus on me. And it's not about me. It's about Jesus. So when Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, he, he did it to show us something. I'm, let's go ahead and read John verses, uh, ch chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. And then Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So Jesus has been talking about the resurrection in the last day. He'd been teaching this, right? And that's what we're looking forward to is that rapture of our resurrection. But here in 25 it says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet he shall live. In 26 it says, And whosoever liveth and believeth, do we live? We live. We're living right now. We're breathing. Because it says, Whoever so liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Okay, because we are breathing. We are alive on this earth right now. Jesus was, he was in human form. He breathed, he suffered, he, he died just like we did. But so did Lazarus. Let, let me get this through your head, and this is what, I hope it comes out the way it was shown. Lazarus went through a lot. He suffered. I don't know exactly how he died, but he was sick apparently because Martha, they were calling on Jesus, and Jesus was, it took him four days to get there. Okay, and Jesus knew what was going on. He wasn't worried about Lazarus because he knew what was going to happen. But what was Martha, and I believe it was Mary, their sister, they, what'd they do? They sat there and watched their brother die. Has anybody sat and watched somebody die? It's challenging. Very, very challenging. I do a nursing home ministry, and I see this constantly, of bodies withering up and doing crazy crazy things that it's like how does he even go in that way you know but we watch this and i believe what jesus is trying to do here is show us 
that you can sit there and watch somebody physically die, but understand that it's not about that. We live under a curse, a curse of sin, which we're going to get in and talk about Adam and Jesus. But the curse of sin, when, they, when Adam and Eve sinned, that curse came into the world. And that's what we're suffering right now, is all these cancers, all this disease, this sickness is the curse of this world. And you see it more and more with the COVID. Uh, look at the past two years, how crazy it's been. How many people have passed away from COVID? We've seen this happening. But the thing is, us as fellow as believers, we should not fear death. Because death can come at any moment. I'm praying for resurrection, but death can come at any moment. We could come out here and somebody would broadside us and we can die just like that. Or we can be in a coma. We can do all these crazy things can happen to this flesh because it is of the world. But once we get past that, we've got to understand that Jesus, when he rose a Laz raised Lazarus from the dead, that he was trying to show us that he is the way and the life. That he gave Lazarus another chance just as he gives us another chance. Once this, once this flesh goes to the grave, that's when we start living, guys. That's what we need to understand. That's what you need to get in your heart, your spirit, your mind, and understand that, yes, it may be painful in your mind. You may lose your mind because I, I watch it all the time. Once the mind goes, the body is shortly there going afterwards. And once their mind goes, you can't get in, into it. They're in their own little world. But yet you know because... And I'm just giving you examples of I ministered to uh, many people that they sat in my Bible study week after week after week with a clear mind. And then all of a sudden their mind starts going. Then they don't get out of bed. Then you go and, and you're praying by them and they're in their own little world. They're somewhere, somewhere in the past. You don't understand. You can't communicate. But I know where their heart is. I knew the way they were before their mind disappeared. So we need to understand this. It's not about this body. It's about our heavenly and earthly body. So anyway, but it, 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 you guys understand that the, when Jesus rose Lazarus, he was showing us that it doesn't matter what we do now. It's going to be about our eternity. It's about when he's coming back and he's going to give us life. And I'll tell you right now, if I die, do not pray to bring me back. I don't want to come back. If I was Lazarus, I'd been upset. You know, because he had to go through this all over again. You know, I mean, I, I'm sure his, his family and everything were happy and thrilled to death to see him again. But he comes hopping out of the tomb and it's like, really, people? You know, it's like, come on. I was, I was at peace. I was at rest. You know, but here's Jesus right there, and I guarantee you that's one thing that, that I'm looking forward to. It's not about my family members and stuff. I want to see them, but I want to be at the feet of Jesus, and that should be our heart. You know, when I, 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 I know what people mean when they say, well, I, I can't wait to go see my grandma. I can't wait to see my mom. I can't wait to see my dad. I can't wait to see my daughter. I want to see Jesus because if I see Jesus, I see my family with them. Praise God. That's what it's about for me. And I hope it's that way for you too. Put Jesus first. And all those other things will come. He's going to make light out of all things. So let's talk about fear as we get into this a little bit deeper. There's two types of fear in the Bible. There's the fear of the Lord. And I'm going to give you the scriptures. Proverbs 14, 27. It says, the fear of the Lord is the fountain of life. That kind of fear we're looking as respect and awe and it's reverence. It's love for God. That's the kind of fear that, that, he, that he's talking about. It's not being scared of God in right, when he's talking about it here. He said, the fear of the Lord is fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death. So we got to have the fountain of life to depart. I don't even watch. Okay, we're at, <laughs> we're at Proverbs 14, 27. So I try not to even. There we go. So anyway, but, uh, but anyway, to depart from the snares of death, 
we've got to understand that we've got to respect God. And, and to know God, we've got to know Jesus, right? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. But the other fear we're talking about, and we're talking about 2 Timothy 1, chapter 1, verse 7, says, for God has not given, you guys know this one by heart, I know, for God has not given us what? Spirit of fear, but what? And love, a sound mind. Praise God. That's the kind of fear. He's not giving us a fear and the encyclopedia or Wikipedia, whatever, that says fear and an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, like the cause of pain uh, and such. And that, that's really when we think about the fear of death, I know, you know, I don't want to suffer. I, I want to go in my sleep, not like all the other people screaming in the car, right? She got it. She got it. So anyway... <laughs> So anyway, but anyway, like I said, we, we need to understand that even though we may suffer when we die, that it's not about that. It's about the victory that we have after him. And the death we talk about, we need to understand in the Bible that there's two deaths. You guys know that there's two deaths, right? But we as believers, we're only going to suffer one death. And praise God we suffer that one death. Actually, I, I'm hoping we go in resurrection but but again there's that one death but but let's talk about the second one real quick is uh you know the first death would be basically just we stop breathing we're bought we're our soul is leaving this earth and you know and, and i'm gonna got, i've got some scripture to be absent with the lord or be absent of the body present with the lord and such and so on and so forth but i don't know but once i leave this earth i know that jesus we're going to be at rest with him Okay, so, so I'll get on to that later. But let's talk real quick about that second death. And it, it, we'll go in Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. Revelation chapter 2, verse 11 says, who, Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. Are you victorious? I pray that you are. You know, sometimes do you feel feel victorious maybe not but i tell you what when you got jesus and you're serving him trusting him relying on him leaning on him he you are victorious even though our bodies are falling apart ronda right we're still victorious you know my daughter always saying we don't understand well you know we prayed you know why aren't you healed and my daughter daughter would always say well i'm healed my body just don't know it yet and that's really what it's about. You know, we're healed by the blood of Jesus. And it doesn't matter if we get our healing on this earth or the next. We're healed by the blood of Jesus. And you need to stand on that and claim that because once we leave this earth, it's all about eternity. It's all about eternity. Praise God. So, uh, but on the, the unbelievers in verse uh, Revelation chapter 21, uh, verse 8, this is where we don't want to go, and this is where we don't want to be, and this is where we don't want to see our loved ones suffering. And this is why we need to be praying and, and seeking God to give us direction to be able to help and witness and, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it says this, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and liars, they will be consigned to a fiery lake, fiery lake of burning sulfur. And this is a second death. This is hell, guys. And we're a church that we believe in hell. But I'm going to preach heaven. Because that's where I want you to go. I want every one of us to be walking on the streets of gold. He's prepared a place for us. And that's where we're going, guys. Don't get discouraged. Don't get broken hearted. Know that he is our God and we're victorious. But Jesus delivers us in the, from the fear of death in Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. Hebrews 2, 14 through 15 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death. And that was the devil. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Well, let's break this scripture down real quick. It says, for as much 
as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood. Are you? We're flesh and blood. We're his children, and we're flesh and blood. And then he himself likewise, which we're talking about Jesus, he came and he took part in the same. That means he came to this earth, took on flesh and blood, just like us. He was just like us. The only thing was that his DNA had God in it. Okay, but the thing was he was born through a woman and he had flesh and blood. He bled just like us. He hurt just like us. He had feelings, emotions, everything just like us. But if he wouldn't have done that, he, we would not have had victory because he says right here he did that that he might destroy him that had power over the death over death so he had to come to this world become like us to be able to conquer the devil and he delivered us from that bondage of, of death and it says that we're a lifetime subject to the bondage and we are there's no way of getting out of death period the only way out of it is through the rapture of Jesus Christ everybody's going to die that's a fact of life there's nothing going to change and I don't care who you are what kind of life you live, you can be the, the most wild person in the world, most sinful person in the world, but I can tell you right now, because I'm witnessing it right now through a, through a situation that you can live like the devil and end up with a disease, and you understand that your eternity is coming quickly. And you see people change. People's minds start thinking, what's going to happen? What's this? Is, is this hell that this church has really been talking about? Is that real? What in the world do I need to do? And it starts opening up their eyes, but the Holy Spirit ministers to that. You know, and, and we think, well, you know, forget them. They live like they wanted all. That's not what Jesus wanted. He said the first will be last, or the last will be first, and the first will be last. So I can tell you right now that these people that accept Jesus on their deathbed, just like Pastor was talking about earlier, they're, they're there. It doesn't matter what their lifetime, because when we repent of our sins, Jesus is faithful to forgive us of our sins. He's not going to bring that up to us. He's not going to come up. Now, we'll be judged on our works and how many crowns he has. That may be a totally different thing. But I can tell you right now, he, he's in heaven. I don't think, you know, he, he, he made it to heaven, and that's what it's about. So, so we need to understand that Stand faithful in what you've got because people are watching you. People are watching you. Your loved ones are watching you because when they know that they can call upon you to pray for them, that's going to change their lives. You have an opportunity to witness to them because no matter how much they may hate it right now if they're in sound mind or whatever, they're going to know that when they get to that point, they can call upon you for prayers. So anyway, we have victory over death because of what Jesus did on the cross. And we also, we understand too that Jesus took away the sting of death. And this is somewhere that, you know, we, we go back, you guys have heard it saying, but, but this is where we start talking about Adam and Jesus. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 45 through 58, which is, is quite a bit, and... Uh, We'll see what we can get through here. Uh, I'll probably read it out of my NIV here because I can't. It's too small on here to see. So 1 Corinthians 15:45, And we'll just walk through this real quick. It says 40, in verse 45, it says, So it is written, The first man, Adam, became living and breathing. The last Adam... A living, giving spirit. So we got Adam that came. God created him a living being, right? But then he created, or Jesus came. And what does it say Jesus was? He was a life-giving spirit. Praise God. So the spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. See, guys, we have to, we're in the natural right now. And this is what I was telling you about. It's e about eternity. Because once we go through this natural, we go into the spiritual. Praise God. And that ought to excite us as a church. You ought to be, I mean, just truly excited and know that there is one day that we're going to be spending eternity with Him. 
So it says the first man was of dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth and is the heavenly man. Okay, so, so what this is saying is that we're still of the earth, but we have a chance to be like our heavenly father. Just as Jesus rose again, he got a new body. He put on immortality. We have that same opportunity because of what Jesus did on the cross. Praise God. So, so it says, let's see. As the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. In verse 49 it says, And just as we have borne the image of earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. See, this is telling us right here, guys, that we're going to have an image. We're going to put on a new body, a new, a new body when we get to heaven. So we need to understand that no matter what this body, what this flesh does to us on this earth, it's only temporary. It, it's temporary. It's not going to last into eternity because we are children of a living and breathing God. So it says in 50, it says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. We can't go to heaven in this body. It's a fact. We just can't. So we're going to put this body away, and that's when he gives us a brand new one. So in 51 it says, Listen, I tell you the mystery, we will not all sleep. And this is a, this is a praise to the Lord because this is where he's telling us that we have a chance to go in the resurrection, guys. It says in a flash, in verse 52, he says, well, 51, go back there, he says, we will not all fall asleep. We will all not die, is what he's saying. But we will be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead, and, uh, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself in imperishable and immortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed, with imperishable and the mortal with immorality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, oh, where is your sting? Or death, oh, oh death, is your, where, oh, death is your victory? Where, oh, death is your sting? See, and that, that's one thing. That's where Jesus is coming again. So if we leave this earth right now at this moment, if a nuclear bomb, let's just say, a nuclear bomb wiped us out. Our physical bodies, what we're in right now, are going to be gone. And what's going to happen is we're going to be in the presence of the Lord one way or the other. We're either in rest until he comes back, but I tell you what, we will not be in torment because we're believers. We trust Jesus. We've got the blood of Jesus that covered us. He is not going to send us into any torment, uh, hell or torment torment or anything like that because we have accepted him and God looks upon that we'll be judged one day at the great white throne judgment yes and that we're going to talk about here in a little bit too but uh but as we talk about eternity we need to understand that we're not even a speck right now guys when you start talking about eternity it's forever it's never ending it's not going to stop it's not going to stop. So where do you want to spend your eternity? You can spend it in either eternal punishment or in eternal life. I choose eternal life. And I know you guys do too. But anybody listening right now, there is the only way to eternal life is through Jesus Christ. Because he said, just like I said at the beginning, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So... Uh, so anyway, we need to understand that things which are seen are temporal, but things which are not seen are eternal. We see our bodies right now. We can't see our spirit. We can feel our spirit, but we can't see a spirit. Okay, so we need to understand that our bodies are just temporal. And the scripture I got for this is 2 Corinthians 4:16 uh, through 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 through 18. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. Is your inward, 
inward man being renewed day by day. You're going to have a hard time fighting in this world and standing in this world if you're not being renewed day by day. Because in this world, it's trying to take everything that we believe out of us. Satan wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy our families. He wants to destroy our way of life. He wants to destroy our health. Because he knows how many Christians did we lose this year through COVID. You know, and, and it's not because, oh, they didn't have enough faith and all that. No. No, I tell you right, when, when Jesus or God wants to take us out of the earth, we're going to leave this earth. And it doesn't matter if it's through COVID or a, some nuclear blast or, or just being hit, run over, or just dying. We're going to leave this earth. We don't have a choice in that matter because the things that we are, it says that we can see us right now. But we want to see things that are eternal. And in order to see things that are eternal, we need to renew our spirit every day so we can live by the spirit and crucify this flesh. It says, for our light affliction, well, I'll just start all over. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish yet, our inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affi affliction, which is but a moment. See, he's calling this what we're living right now just a moment. And we need to stand on that and realize that this is just a moment. This is not eternity, praise God. I don't want back pain for eternity. I don't think... I know we won't have back pain for eternity because we're going to be living in an immortal body. So he says, uh, Worketh for us far exceedingly an eternal weight of glory, while we look not on the things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So guys, what that's telling us is that we need to walk in the Spirit. We need to trust the Lord Walk in the Spirit, not in truth. And if you guys go read John uh, chapter 14 tonight or in the morning or sometime this week, he goes on and he starts telling his disciples about the Holy Spirit. That's how we're going to walk in the Spirit, guys. It's through, when Jesus left this earth, he sent the Spirit for a comfort us, to guide us and direct us and embolden us to preach the Word. Praise God. So what must I do in eternal, have eternal life? There was a certain lawyer that asked Jesus this. In Luke uh, 10, 25 and 28. In 25 it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inter, 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 inherit eternal life? He was trying to trick Jesus, for one. But there wasn't no trick in Jesus. And, and I like what Jesus said because he made him answer it. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And this lawyer, he said, He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God and all the heart, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, all thy mind, and thy neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said unto him, Thou have answered right. Do this and thou shalt live. He just told us right there what we need to do to inherit eternal life. But we need to understand what, what is loving our neighbors. What, what does that even mean? What, you know, because me personally, loving people, people can get on your nerves. We know that. We understand that. I can get on people's nerves probably more than a lot of you. But, but the thing is we need to understand that just because somebody aggravates you or irritates you, doesn't mean we don't have love for them. Doesn't mean that we don't have passion for them. I, there's not a person on this earth that I don't want to spend eternity with, okay? Because, you know, yes, you may irritate me, you, but I tell you what, I don't want to see anybody suffer hell. Anybody. My worst enemies, I don't want to see them suffer in hell. Because I can tell you what, when we're in we're in heaven, God's going to make a way, and it's going to be so amazing, so amazing that we have something to look forward to. But I'm going to give, show, uh, the Bible shows us an example of loving what it means to love our neighbor. And this is that, this is all the, the great white throne of judgment is what we're talking about here. And we're going to go to Matthew 25, chapter 25, verse 31 through 46. 
It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with them, then shall he set upon the throne of his glory. And guys, as I read this, I want you to understand how amazing this is going to be for us as believers. Because this is a time where we're going to see Jesus doing what we've been taught all of our life that great judgment that we don't have no fear of, but, you know, we think, well, what about all the things that I've done in my past? What, you know what? Jesus said that he cast them in the sea of, sea of forgetfulness. So my thing is, how in the world am I going to be judged for all the crazy, stupid things that I did in my past when Jesus forgot it? When we get that great white throne, I believe he's going to look on our good works. And, and let's just finish this out because I, I, this will explain it all, actually. So anyway, it says, And before him shall be gathered all nations, which is going to be us, and he shall separate one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. We want to be sheep, guys. We don't want to be goat. I know my Sister Mary ain't here, but we want to be sheep. We want to be sheep. We want to be on his right hand. So anyway, it says, uh, uh, And before him shall all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but, uh, I'm sorry, I can't hardly see this. Let's go up there. <laughs> this, okay, where was it? What verse was I at? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Next verse. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. Praise God. Prepare for you, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and yet you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. 37. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, and thirsty, and you gave us drink? When saw thee, a stranger, and you took us in, and naked, and you clothed thee? Or when saw ye thee sick, or in prison, and came to thee? And the king shall answer. Listen to this, guys. And the king shall answer him, I say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as I have done it unto, if ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it in, unto me. Okay, and basically the rest of that scripture goes on. It, it talks about the ones that have not done that. And they are not going to have eternal life. The righteous, it says at the very end of uh, 46, it says the righteous uh, will enter into eternal life. But those unrighteous, the ones on his left, will face eternal punishment. And I don't want to see that, guys. So what that means is we need to feed the hungry. We need to go to our prisons. We need to go to the nursing homes. We need to support our... Uh, orphans or widows this is how we love we love people that's what we do at yellow assembly of god is we love people and that's how we're getting that's our salvation that's how we are obeying his commandments that's how we're going to inherit eternal life we gave our life to the lord and everybody said well i gave my life to the lord when i was three years old i said this prayer and and this and that but they never they never stepped in the door of the church afterwards. They never did anything else, but yet they expect to reap the rewards. And I like the, what Pastor put on the sign out there. You know, don't live like the devil and expect that Jesus to be paying your rent because that's what a lot of people are doing these days. And it breaks my heart that, you know, some of our own family, we see it. You know, we raised, they're raised in church and, and stuff and and, but they don't want to take time out of their Sundays to go to church or hear the word of the Lord or take their kids anymore. They just want to sit at home and watch, 
the boob tube. They want to be entertained by a phone and sit there on their phones and see Facebook and see all the drama and see all this stuff. And I could get on my soapbox right now because it would be very easy because the way this world is going, it is going to hell. And our churches are called to change that. You, me, pastor, we are called to change that. Sister Mary, Kath, everyone is called by the name of Jesus to go out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ through all nations. Through all nations. That means starting in Yale, Cushing, Manford, Alton, uh, Drumright, you name it. We need to start where we're at in the workplace. We need to start declaring the name of Jesus. Living our lives a way that is supporting Jesus. We are ambassadors. We are called by his name. We, we're still, we mess up. We know that. But when people are looking at your life and they see you mess up, a lot of them... They may laugh at you and all that, but I tell you what, when they see you get back in the good graces of God, they know that there's something different. Because they can see that like, oh man, did you hear him the other day when he smashed his finger? Good grief. I, got, I mean, I knew he was a sailor, but good grief. You know what? Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. And when you are doing that, people are going to see that in you. They're going to see that in the church. The problem that we've got right now is the church, honestly, Lord, I, I just ask you to help us right now because we as a church, everybody wants entertainment. Everybody wants entertainment. And when you're in the big cities and you've got thousands and thousands of people to choose upon and stuff, you can have this great entertainment. But I'm telling you right now, I love our old country church. I love this old country church because I know every one of your names. I know who's not here right now. You know, and that's one thing we need to do is we need to reach out to those that are not here because they need to know that they're missed. And I'm just as guilty as anybody of not actually doing that. So let's try to put that on a list and make that a priority, guys, to start reaching out to those that are sick and hurting and not here. All right? So anyway, let's get back to our, the message. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. And I told you I was talking about this because it, it's a big question. It's a big question. Lord, you know, when I leave this earth, when my, I take that last breath, what happens? Well, there's lots of books out there. Heaven's for real, 90 minutes in heaven and all this. All I can tell you is I don't know, but I know that I am going to be victorious in whatever I do. If I fall asleep, if, I, if God puts me to sleep until he comes again and raises me up, because we won't know it, guys. I want you to understand that. The time in heaven is not the same on time as earth. It's not going to matter. When we leave this, once we die, we go to sleep. Our bodies are gone. Our mind is gone. We are at rest with him. Okay? And I'm praying that the minute, and this is the way I see it because it gets me through things. Because I think if we, even if we go to sleep the minute we die, when we awake, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to be at the feet of Jesus. Praise God. Because the one thing, and you guys know that we, we lost our daughter. Uh, the one thing that got me through that, Aunt Tracy, was the way that I seen that. And people told me that I was crazy. My daughter... Some, most of you know the story, but I know Janet probably don't know it. My daughter, 17-year-old, was coming to church on a Wednesday night, ran a stop sign on North Fork Road, and got hit at 50 mile an hour. And the story was that the sun was in her eyes, she ran a stop sign and got hit and died instantly. It hurts, it's painful, I miss her, but I'll see her again. But the one thing, here's the one thing that I want you guys to understand, how God can make good out of all things. All I could picture, all through that, I went home smiling that night. The minute I was sitting there, after my daughter died, I was standing in front of the mirror smiling. You tell me how. You tell me how, I'll tell you how. Because I knew the only thing that I could picture in my mind was my, my daughter looking in the sun, seeing something so bright, and then all of a sudden at the feet of Jesus. 
That's the one thing that got me through all of everything was seeing my daughter at the feet of Jesus. Just like I'm going to be when I leave this earth. I'm going to be at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to be worshiping him. I'm going to be thanking him for what he's done in my life. I'm going to thank him for giving me the power to preach to people, the power to witness to people, the power to do his work and to love and, and cherish people because he's the only one that can give you that. We can go all through our lives hating people and challenging and just letting people get on our nerves. It's easy, especially in the church, it's so easy. But if you let Satan get a foothold in there, he will take that and he will use that to destroy the church. We've seen it over and over and over and over and over. And a lot of them in these country churches, because sister so and or I can't just say sister, but so-and-so, said something about somebody and this and that and oh it hurt my feelings i'm not coming back no more oh the pastor preached this there's excuses after excuses but i'm going to tell you if we keep our heart our mind and our soul right with jesus we're going to be focused on him and it's not going to matter what anybody else says about us when god calls us we're going to go wherever god calls us and i'm talking to you too wherever god calls us we're going to go because we were talking about earlier, it's hard to reach people in your hometown. It's hard to reach your family because they know what you used to be. They don't have forgiveness on a lot of things. But I am not who I used to be. You are not who you are used to be. Because Jesus has changed us. Jesus loves us. So being absent from the body and present with the Lord in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians sorry, 5 and 8. John says that we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. He's confident in saying this. He, he's confident, but he doesn't know. He's like us. He's like, okay, I, I know what Jesus, Jesus is going to be there. But he's confident in saying this. He says, willing rather to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Okay, so in Luke 23, this is where we need to understand what Jesus says. In Luke chapter 23, verse 42 and 43, he is on a cross. And you guys know, most of you guys know this story. He says unto Jesus, and this is a thief. I forget which side, but anyway. And this thief, he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me thou, when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, what? Verily I say unto thee, unto thee, today, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So Jesus just told this thief that you're going to be with me in paradise. And he's fixing to die. So that's right there is words to stand by, guys. That no matter what happens when we leave this earth, we're going to be with Jesus in paradise. Because when we pass from life unto death and this I close with this verse John 5 24 John chapter 5 verse 24 he says Jesus says verily verily I say unto you he that heareth my word we've heard his word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but pass from death unto life. Praise God. Don't fear death, guys. Don't fear death. Know that Jesus is with us always. He's going to be with you through all the pain, through all the agony, in the nursing home, in the hospital. He's going to be with you in your wheelchairs, in your walkers, uh, in your test in the hospital. He is with you. Don't get discouraged on what those test results come back. Because no matter what they are, we are still victorious in Jesus. Because I can tell you right now, even Paul was talking about, he wanted to leave this earth, but he knew that he had a, he, he found it greater to be with Christ than to stay on this earth. But he knew that Christ gave him a purpose to be on this earth. So remember that no matter what you're going through, you've got a purpose. And this is what I tell the, the people in the nursing homes all the time is that you have not lost your purpose. You still have your mind. 
You still talk to your family. You still communicate. You can still pray. You can go up and down these halls praying for others. You can, if they'll allow you, you can lay your hands on others and pray for them. And, and we believe in healing. I'm believing in miracles. You know, it's so easy to get discouraged because we don't see things instantly. But I can tell you what, that I can see life's change. I can see people know that they're going to face eternity with life and not death. And know that when there's that second death that it talks about, we're free and clear, guys. If you got Jesus into your heart, we're free and clear. We're going to be judged by what we do, but that's because he's going to give us crowns. He's going to give us things. And that, that's why we do what we do. You know, I don't have to be up here to be saved. You don't have to be singing up there to be saved. You can be saved where you're at. You can do the works. You don't have, if you're not called to be a minister or a pastor or, or, or whatever, do what he's called you to do. But you have a purpose. You've got a mouth, you've got a voice, and you've got a life. Live it to glorify Jesus Christ. And he will. He will make a way where there is no way. Josh, you awake back here? I've asked him, to, I want to just have an altar call tonight. I know this wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I hope you guys got something out of it because one thing that I want you to know that don't fear death. Don't fear death. But the one thing that we know I want as a church because God is working in this place. We're fighting some trials, guys, as a church. Uh, and we are the church. We're not the only church. But this is what's going on in the world. And I love this song. You guys listen to it. If you want to come to the altars and pray, come to the altars and pray. If you need prayer, uh, come up here. We will lay hands on you and pray for you. But just listen to these the words of this.